All right, let's get into another Q&A here. A little Veterans Day because where I'm at, it's 12.54 a.m. right now. So it's officially Veterans Day. So we're having a little drink, a little red wine for the veterans out there, for the people that have served and fought, and even for the ones that have died. A little bit of whiskey in their remembrance. Uh, so let's get to a little Q&A here. We got quite a few questions to get through. Um, first, what is your opinion of national anarchism? And do you have an opinion of Ted Kaczynski and his writings? Um, first, any kind of anarchism, w whether it's r racial communities, national communities, no communities, whatever it is, I I'm not favorable of any sort of anarchism, however they try to justify it. First, it's already existed, right? If, if we look at human evolution and how human nature has grown and the, the human dynamic with each other has grown it started off like that you could say we started off more anarchistic and then of course the reality set in and we became more tribal and then nationalistic so it's um th that was a steady evolution i think we should keep evolving in that direction so i'm not i don't see it as a workable uh, solution at least to what i want i guess it depends on what someone wants or what someone views what life is about so for me I feel humanity in this short time on earth, first that we're just a link in the chain and, and we'll all of us alive right now within a hundred years will be dead, dead and gone. And our children and their grandchildren and, and their great, our great grandchildren will be carrying on. And, and it's up to us, you know, to pass on our traditions, our culture onto our children, our ethics and, and they carry on not only our, our essence, but our biology as well. But carry on for what? Just to live? Just to fucking, you know, buy more shit and watch more television and, and that's it? No. There has to be a greater goal, a greater reason of life. And for me, you can't accomplish these goals and these reasons of life when you're a bunch of separated communities always in conflict with each other. And this is what you're going to get with any kind of anarchism. And uh, because it's always going to end up and at first it's just complete fantasy it doesn't exist it won't exist it can't exist human nature defies it nature itself defies it so you know it's pointless to me i see it as pure selfishness and delusional selfishness because it doesn't even it's like i speak to all these defenders of capitalism and nine tenths out of the people that defend capitalism um do not benefit under capitalism at all actually are harmed by capitalism but yet you know stockholm syndrome oh it's so great so same with anarchism. Uh, it's purely selfish, and it doesn't even work out to the people that are going to be selfish. Uh, you would find, even selfish people would find a more outlet for their own uh, preservation in a fascistic society. So back to what I want out of life is that collective society, uh, just how uh, we sailed the seas hundreds of years ago, and it was a great mystery to us. We should be doing that through space right now. And we can't do that with all these different anarchistic communities, you know, arguing with each other or have, going their own different ways and et cetera. We need to be unified, working towards common goals as a unified people, a collective mass, putting our, you know, our human dynamic together for uh, unified goals, a common destiny, uh, um, a direction forward. And this just, we're not going to get that with any kind of anarchism. So this is why I've always been against it and will remain against it, any form of it, because I think we're squandering our life potential right now. I, I think we could be achieving a lot more. And I think we're still going, we're still go on the path of that Faustian drive because it's going to be natural into some people and you know, it's why, why would people go into biology and not into being, uh, you know, on Wall Street? It's because they're more, because, you know, biologists and especially research and development don't get paid that much. So you have to have a love for it, a, a love for questing for knowledge and understanding. And so this exists in people. So despite capitalism and materialism and modern day hedonism, there's still people like this that exist and there will always be. It just, it slows down our arrival rate at, at, at these new advancements. So I say when we're all collectively working towards common goals, it, it accelerates it, you know, 
you know, who knows? Who knows what the what the potential is, or how much it accelerates it? So, I'm against all forms of of anarchistic um, philosophy. I I despise it. To me, like I, I, like the common criminal is is better than the capitalist in my eyes. Like I, I just I can't express how how vile I view capitalist and individualist. It it, it really is. It's just a I, I view it as complete delusion or selfishness or being engulfed by an ego. And it's, um, I find it completely ugly. So as I do find their philosophies completely ugly, no matter how they try to express it, um, whether it's, it's racial communities, national communities, whatever, it's, it's all the same in my eyes. And Ted Kaczynski, I love Ted Kaczynski. I, I love what he wrote. I think he was an extremist. I'm not an extremist like him. I, if he's at 100%, I would be at 60%, you know, where he's at uh, as far as where he's going. But I, I think he's very right to be concerned with a lot of things he was concerned about with uh, technology and the advancement of technology and, and everything else. It, it's, uh, there's so many setbacks to it that it should be addressed and looked into. And this is kind of what I go into on, on my video on capitalism and automation. It's the same thing. And the capitalist was, you know, once again, they don't give a fuck. Material, 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 baby. That's all that matters to them. All right. Um, here we go. This is a long, detailed one. I have a few questions for you about religion. What is your opinion about Christianity? How will it relate to American fascism? And do you think it has a future? Hmm. That damn religion question. Race, Jews, and religion. Ah, oh, three topics that, being that I'm probably going to have to end up running for local positions, like I shouldn't really fucking talk about, but it's just, it is what it is. You have to address it, right? I'm not going to shirk away from anything. But these are all the touchy subjects. I guess sexuality is now, you can add that to the list these days. But, um, Super touchy subjects. And every time I go into Christianity, I get a little blowback from uh, my Christian viewers. <clears throat> so let me put the warning out there or the disclaimer. Um, you know, I, I respect, I, I'm agnostic in my personal beliefs, which means I believe I don't know. And I personally believe nobody knows. And and so even when I meet the most, the Christian who believe, who has the most faith in the world, um, in my head, I'm like, okay, you can have all the faith that you want, but you truly don't know, right? You only know when you die, then maybe you don't never know because maybe it's just where you were before you're born, right? Back to that Schopenhauer quote. Um, so whatever the case may be, I never completely 100%, 100% dismiss anyone for their religious beliefs either. I'm not arrogant enough to assume I know because I truly believe I don't know. I just go where my spirit, my brain take me as far as this subject goes. So that's my belief on the religion. Now, before I answer what I think about Christianity, let me say, let me jump to how will it re relate to American fascism? And do you think it has a future? Um, it'll have to relate heavily with American fascism because America is a Christian country. And I think you can hold up uh, traditional Christian values and and th that's what America is, is going to be surrounded by, you know, whether someone likes it or not. So it's to embrace it. So I don't, I don't seek to attack or change um, the Christian uh, majority in this country. Um, I, I do think the government should be secular always, but I, I don't think we should, you know, pull down crosses. I don't, you know, I, I had to, um, did we? No, I was going to say we, we did the hand over the heart for the, um, oh, under God. That's what you had to say, under God, underneath the Pledge of Allegiance. You know, I was, that never offended me and it doesn't offend me if they make my kids do it at all. It's like, it's just part of the tradition. Just do it. It doesn't mean you have to believe it. Just, you know, you live in a Christian culture. It's like you wouldn't go into a Muslim culture and tell them to start changing, you know, all their prayers or what they do or, oh, I'm tired of this mosque blaring five times a day. This dude singing in some Arabic voice. Let's get rid of that. You wouldn't go in Saudi Arabia doing that shit, right? Or anywhere else in, in the Arab lands for that matter. Uh, doing that. So I think the same for the America. You have to respect it. And I think it will be heavily entwined in American fascism. Now, as far as my personal beliefs, different story here. Now, uh, online, I'll, I'll meet people who have have what I like to call more masculine Christian views. But this isn't the reality. These are outliers in the Christian sect. 
The reality is like like we just had this church shooting in Texas where like 27 people were died and a lot of them kids and women, but there were men in there. So as this guy with one gun walks into a building, you know, we went through this with the gay bar. We went through this with college class shootings. When people start piling up in fear, I don't want to die. You're going to die anyways, motherfucker. But now you're going to die with a bullet in your back, a coward, fear in your eyes, all that shit. And it, that's not a way to fucking die. You only die once. You only die once. What the fuck? You might as well have a good death. So they didn't have this. And this is what blows my mind. And this is what, these are the Christian, this is the Christian ethos, the Christian ethics that, you know, really, and, and uh, I really hate, but then people online are like, oh no, but this, that, that, I get it. There's someone of you out there that embraces more masculine Christianity. You want to, re- you know, reverse it 500, 600 years ago and adopt that kind of Christian attitude. More power to you. You're just in the extreme minority is what you need to understand. So we have to accept that reality. So back to the church shooting, what happens? This guy goes to just murdering children and women. And what do these Christian cucks do? The men, they're probably balled up too. The video, they said there's video. It's not out yet. I would love to see it because I'd love to see how they acted. Now, A, you supposedly believe that life is hell and death is paradise. You get to go to heaven. It's all great. God's glory. St. Peter, blah, blah, blah. You get all this shit when you die. But all these people are so afraid of fucking dying. So much afraid of dying that they let one man execute women and children in a fucking church. When, when there's, what, 30, 40 people in there? <laughs> and they let him do this? There's not three or four of the men or even the women running at the guy? It's like, okay, one or two of you are going to die, but the other are going to grab them and everyone else is going to jump on there. That mentality is not even there. Why? Because the, the Christian ethos is so meek and cowardly, and this is what it, it promotes, despite what my masculine Christianity uh, friends online would like to say. This is what it promotes. This, this is why every time I meet a, a, like a really, someone who's really into Christianity, not, you know, someone who says, oh, I'm a Christian, but they never go to church and they, you know, really haven't read shit about the Bible. They just kind of know what they know, what they've been told. Real believers in Christianity, they're always very weak people, very weak people, very effeminate people, very meek people. And this is their, you know, they're very convinced this is what their religion, religion tells them to be. And, and thus they are that. And, and this is why I think Christianity caught on, because you had these uh, pagan beliefs that were more built around merit, more, more built around action, more built around your deeds. You know, you, you go to Valhalla only after a glorious death. That's it. Christianity, you just bend the knee. You just accept and submit, just like Islam. So I view these religions, first, their philosophies I don't agree with. I think they are not in tune with nature. They counteract nature. They create docile sheep. I mean, it's even said in the Bible, they're sheep. And and they're proud of that fact. Well, hey, like lambs, you get led to the slaughter then. And I'm not about that. I'm not about being led to the slaughter. And that's what happened to that church. They were led to the slaughter. So I think what the only person that did interject were people outside of the church that weren't even at church at that time. So it's... um. I view Christianity and Islam as just stems from a Jewish seed, personally. Um, I, I think this all came from the Abrahamic faiths, the Jewish faith, and it's it, they all result, they, they all come from that. And I think they're not organic to Gentiles, period. I think we Gentiles had our religions, um, you know, whether you're a white Gentile, a brown Gentile, a yellow Gentile. Black Gentile, whatever the kind of fucking brand of Gentile you were or are, we had more organic religious and spiritual beliefs that were more in tune with our surroundings than what uh, Judeo Christianity or Judeo Chrislam, as I like to say, uh, was. And I think these are foreign essences. That have kind of come over the European people and Gentiles in period like a gray storm cloud, and it's kind of blocked out the sun from many of us for a very long time now. That's my personal belief. I I view the two largest toxicities of modernity and of our own, you know, defeat and destruction, in my personal opinion, are Christianity and capitalism. That's my personal belief. Now, can 
you're run on a platform with that? Can I go in a town hall and say that? No, it's just not it. And once again, the greater good. I understand. I always talk about this. We have 20 check boxes. We have to you know, take off a couple, make it 15 check boxes so we can all have a greater good and make things work. That's one of the check boxes. You know, I I practice what I preach. That's one of the check boxes that I have to remove for myself. I personally, I'm very hostile to Christianity, but I know it's unrealistic to do that. And, and I know good people who watch this video might be offended by that. And it's not my intention to offend good people. It's just where I'm at, what I believe. So that's my thoughts on that. I, I view it as a very negative thing. I view it as a crippling thing. I completely agree with Nietzsche on it. I, you know, I am, I am a Nietzschean essentially. So that's where, if you know anything of, of, of Nietzsche's opinion of it, that would be pretty much mine. So, um, he expressed it better than I ever could. Like he, and you know, I'm not coming from an ignorant position either. And the irony wearing an iron guard shirt <laughs> talking about this right now, right? It shows I can, I can step outside of that and respect people no matter what their faith, Muslim, Christian, um, Jewish, whatever, that if their merit and character uh, transcends that. So, um, yeah, that's my thought on that. Let's go. Okay, next, part two of the question. There's a heavy, there's a heavy stigma against Islam because of the refugee crisis. A little more than that. We've had this stigma for a while now. Even before this refugee crisis, I've kind of grown up with it my whole life. Um, and the natural tendency is to hate people your country is at war with. Well, you kind of need that, right? The propaganda needs to dehumanize the enemy, get us to kill them and not like them and to support our people killing them. So that's all natural. However, however, the Arabs are one of the few people to be not entirely enthralled by international liberalism. They're coming that way, especially the ones that come over. They're coming that way. Um, it's going to affect everyone if we don't kill it. That, that, that's what it comes down to. Um, this most likely necessitates Islam being an important part of any Arab fascistic movements. Yeah, the Baathist and um, Nasserism are good examples of this. Yeah, they had to placate it even though they both really didn't want to. But do you think there would be inevitable conflict between the West and the Arabs? No, there shouldn't be. There shouldn't be. There, there, there has no need to be. Um, there's... We can thrive in our own lands and be partners and work together and work toward those common goals, right? We, we can do that as separate nations and separate peoples and separate cultures. Uh, that's beautiful. That should exist. I don't want one culture or one, uh, you know, one world government and all this crazy shit. I, I want different people expressing themselves differently. That's fucking beautiful. That's great. I, I'd like to go listen to Arab folk music. It, it, have you listened to it? It's fucking great. And, and I don't even understand what they're saying. But the music, is, is you could feel the soul and the spirit in it. So, I mean, you, you want to be able to have these things existing. So, no, we shouldn't conflict. In fact, I think we'd make very good allies. You remove the certain muddlers out of the picture. I think we'd be very good allies. Um do you think Islam has any place as a popular movement in the West? No, and nor shouldn't it, right? I, I'm already fucking having to deal with Christianity being a popular movement in the West. Now you want another Judeo-Islamic branch, you know, another branch of, of, of Jewishness to, no, we, we, no. One's enough. Let's not go crazy here. Um, even though <laughs> ethically and, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be opposed if you say, oh, we had to switch one for the other. You know, I wouldn't be so opposed um, to putting Islam over Christianity as far as that goes. If we just look at, you know, how they carry themselves. Um, do you think Islam is a place? To, um, no. Uh, what do you think about a more personal religion? Yeah, believe what you want as a person. If a person in America and believes in Islam, more power to you. Believe in it. Do, do your prayers five times a day. Live up to it. You know, live by it. As long as it doesn't affect your neighbor, as long as it doesn't affect... Um, the national laws or anything like that, more power to you with Christianity, with Buddhism, with Islam, with whatever. I, like I said, I, I think it's an arrogant and ignorant stance to take to say one way is a, a absolute right way of belief and everything else is wrong. And I hate that mentality. So I respect everyone and their beliefs. And even though it may seem, you may demean them a little bit in your own head saying, well, look, you really don't know. You're just going off faith. I, I respect people's faith. I actually envy it. I wish I could have more of it. But it's um, 
like uh, it reminds, reminds me of this quote, and I'm going to butcher it right now, but I'll paraphrase it from a philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. And he had said, like he was talking about religion and he had said, it's kind of like the father, like when you're a kid, uh, the father in the room, in the dark room with you. So when you're in the dark room, when you're a kid, you're scared, you're scared of the dark, but all it takes is like your father to come in the room with you, sit down. He doesn't even need to be around you just that, you know, he's in the room. You're more relaxed. You're comfortable. You can sleep now. And, and this is what religion offers to people. I, I think this is a great analogy of what religion offers to people. It's the father in the dark room with you as you're a child. You have that sense of security always there instead of that non-security and that wonder and, and that fear of the unknown that is in a dark room by yourself. So with that being said, you know, personally believe what you want, right? It's, it's more power to you. And he talks about Evola was very sympathetic of Islam and Guyon even uh, converted to Sufism. Yeah, yeah, indeed. I could see aspects. Like at 17, I read the Bible front to back, which was no easy task at that time, especially getting through the New Testament. That was a bit uh, repetitive. But And then I got through half of the Quran, which was super repetitive and very hard to get through. And... You know, so I, that's why I only got through half of it. I had to tap out, even though it's a much shorter book than the than the whole the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. And so, I see the qualities and virtues in both these religions, but but even more so in Islam. And so I understand that. But I'm not about. I'm against total submission. I'm against total submission, and both these religions demand that of you. And that's just something I'm against. It works. I mean, it works for, for the people that go into it. But I I just can't, for whatever reason, I just can't buy into these beliefs. Um, you know, and that's partly one of the reasons. Part three of the question. America seems spiritually dead. I would agree. There are surely some devote clergy that have been fighting against this probably very few though right i really most of these people are just they go with the flow like mormons like it used to be like indians and blacks couldn't even be mormon like they were the curse of cain i believe i was was what the mormons were saying in this all the way up until the 50s 60s and i think maybe they changed it in the 70s and then um or somewhere around there and but they change all these religions do this shit that's that's how you show the fact that you know you had a more strict christianity 500 years ago and you have a much more liberal one today just shows you how much these things change so it's um it's very hollow all these all these christians are very non-spiritual right they're very hollow truly they're they're this trendies essentially they're not they're not true christians as far as i'm concerned they're not really dedicated to this faith and passionately believing in it um da, 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 da. What do you attribute the decline to? Are there any viable solutions to restore spirit in our society? Ooh, what a complex question. What a complex question. It's, um, you know, I, 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 think, I think I've said this before. I should really study for these questions instead of just fucking copy and pasting them the first time I read them and then having some drinks and then fucking responding to them because that's, that's too complex of a question to, for, for me to get into on a rant right now or at least for me to give you an adequate answer on but um, I, I think comfort, I think materialism, I think um, modernity in itself has done a lot to cure this, kill the spirituality in people. I think um, we've been deracinated from our, our roots as, as far as spirit, as far as culture, as far as ethnicity, all this stuff. We've, we've been completely ripped from that root. I think that tears away the spirituality as well. I think capitalism feeds into this as well. It's a very materialistic and hedonistic um, you know, economic philosophy and even kind of governmental philosophy. It kind of transcends everything and, and involves, engulfs all of life like fascism does, but capitalism does it in a negative way. And so when, when, when you have all these material factors and, and, and everything becomes for, uh, you know, pleasure seeking and, and immediate self gratification, I think we lose sight of the bigger picture. And I think as we slowly started losing sight of the bigger picture, as the lights in the city blocked out the lights from the stars, you know, we kind of lost touch with the earth, with our spirit, with ourselves. Now we're just a series of reactions to stimuli. And it's it, that completely rips us away from the soul. And 
being spiritual, even though I'm agnostic, I'm very spiritual. I, 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 I very much have a belief in providence. I, I very much have irrational beliefs and in destiny and in the metaphysical and in the, the continuing of spirit and blood. Like I had these things that you can call irrational, these beliefs that are very religious. My belief in fascism is very religious. And these are very spiritual to me. And, and, it's, it's, and they're not even as spiritual as they need to be. I understand that. And, and I think overcoming that is, is very hard because of all the material, because of all the comfort, because of modernity, of the system that we were all raised in, that we will all live in and, you know, hopefully not, but possibly die in. So it's, it's very hard to overcome that. So now imagine if you're consciously struggling to overcome that and, and get in touch with something deeper, something metaphysical, something you, that your spirit truly speaks to you about. Now, imagine if you're not even really concerned with that. You can just call yourself a Christian and you think you're spiritual now. Or, or you're not even really even paying attention to that. The mass of the people are, are so out of touch with that. And, and even now, spirituality is demonized. Like, atheism is somehow intelligent now. To deny everything. Like, when you look at why and how we exist, God, Christianity, Jesus, Jehovah, fucking Abraham... Um, Muhammad makes more sense than the Big Bang, right? So these people that laugh, like, you're going to tell me a tiny ball of matter that, how did that fucking matter get there in the first place in, in the vastness of nothingness first, right? What the fuck did that come from? Well, you geniuses. But this fucking ball just one day popped and created fucking infinity. And then you're going to sit there and, and, and mock a Christian in their beliefs? <laughs> but that's your fucking in belief what that's more crazy than anything else i've heard so no one fucking knows and 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 to play that that you know the high role so anyways these atheistic people are they like to mock people who who have faith in spirituality but they have to have a certain amount of faith to believe in that wild shit too right this tiny ball of matter that existed in nothingness and came from where i don't know how did it come if there was nothingness where did it come like where's the beginning right and then and then it exploded and then there's this like we can't even wrap our minds around how big the universe is we can't even wrap our mind again you will fucking go crazy trying to think about how vast everything is how little we know and how ig- insignificant we are you will fucking go crazy thinking about it. that's why most people don't because it's like, whoa, what, what's the, especially when we live in a society that is not aggressively trying to accomplish goals. Okay, do you think atheism inherently leads to Jewish materialistic ideas such as Marxism and Freudian psychology? If so, do you support suppressing atheism? Mm. Um, first part of the question, yes. Second part of the question, no. Like I said, I think any individual should be allowed to believe what he wants to believe. It doesn't matter if you have individual atheists around. If you don't have government and a culture promoting and advancing atheism, I mean, you can have a scientific culture that um, doesn't attack religion, that doesn't try to demean religion, and you can have a religious sect of the culture that isn't offended by scientific pursuits. You can have that. And if you can't have that, then fuck, you got to squash one or the other. And then you deal with that when it comes to it. But I believe we can have that. I, I really believe we can have our cake and eat it too. I mean, we are manifestors of our destiny. That's what we need to understand. So we can accomplish anything. People say, oh, no, you can't get this people and this people and this to work together and this to work. We can get anything to work our way if we truly want to and we put our will and talent towards it. So... I think, um, yes, it does enhance this modern materialism that is very, you know, that is very much um, promoted by a Jewish materialist. But, um, and that can go back to their religion. The Jewish religion is very materialist. So, you know, hey, what a coincidence. Um, so, yeah, yes and no as far as that goes. Number five. You reiterated that fascism is anti-intellectualism, which is nice to hear 
as people use intellectual as a buzzword to denounce intelligence. But asceticism and living a simple life are often important parts of a of a more serious journey into religion and mysticism. Do you see a schism emerging between people who emerge in asceticism, monasticism, and pacifism as fascist demand strength in action? No, because usually people to that extent you're talking about are in the small minority. And uh, so it's kind of irrelevant. If people live like that, they live like that. That's fine. It, it's it's uh, the system will be promoted through strength and action and it will advance through st- strength and action. And, <clears throat> you know, and then let's say you do have these situations where you have a, a Gandhi pops up out of you. And it's like, Oh my God, you guys are using too much force. Then you just have to crush them and move on. I mean, what the, the reason why these people gain power is because people don't crush them right away and move on. And, and because they, they let them stay around, they let them get attention, they let them gain sympathy, they let them gain support. Uh, they, they, they allow this to grow. They allow the cancer to grow. I say cut it out as soon as you see it. So if there was, if there was people saying, oh, no, this, what, what if, you know, this fascistic society existed and you had this segment of population that refused to go along with it because of their spiritual views or whatever, then fuck them. Fuck them. Put them all up against the wall. Shoot them all. Bury them in a shallow grave. Say, fuck you. Goodbye. We march on. That simple. All right, on to the next. I have a friend who is half Jewish, and I would like to ask, what do you think is the best way to go about telling him the truth about fascism? They're fairly typical. They're a fairly typical Jew, but I would hate to lose them as a friend. What do you think the best course of action? If they're a fairly typical Jew, but, um, uh, well, you can explain to them exactly what fascism is. Go to my Culture Thug channel, look up what fascist philosophy video, send that to them. Go to, uh, send them the video, is fascism racist? Send that to them. Uh, send my video on, on Mosley to them. I mean, there's, send my video on what a fascist is to them. There you go. Send culture thug videos to them. That's what you do. And it, it is not, American fascism will not be um, a racial fascism. So it's, if, now here's where the conflict comes into play. If, if they're a typical Jew and they identify with being Jewish, a lot of what fascism preaches, the masculine uh, virtues, are inherently against um, Jewish virtues. So if he's a typical Jew, he may naturally be repulsed by the idea of fascism in itself. So there's always that to consider. So, you know, I don't advocate throwing the baby out with the bathwater, but you, you have to consider that. And this is what you'll find with your friends that are Jewish and whatnot. When, when you present who you are as a person, what your beliefs are, and, and you, you express it well, like, look, it's not about hating you or your sect of people or your religion. It's about embracing... Um, these virtues and it's about you know uh, you know promulgating um these beliefs and then if they're opposed to that well they've chosen their side and it's as simple as that now if they try to attach that with saying oh well you're anti-semitic because you believe you know a b or c once again they're choosing their side and and we naturally have to be if modernity is semitism which i believe it is then and if we're anti-modernity we're going to be anti-Semites. So it's up to the Jew to also embrace this anti-Semitism in themselves too, if they want to be American. It's as simple as that. And there's examples of Jews that have, Otto Weininger and so on and so forth, right? But there's, um, that's the reality of it. It's not, you know, I, I, I've, I struggle with like, how much do you speak on the Jewish question? Because it's so toxic, but it's so vital and it's so unavoidable. So, I mean, it is what it is. And they're going to attack you no matter what. Just simply speaking on masculine virtues. So let's say you run for some position in your local town and you're specifically speaking on masculine virtues and you have a concept of honor and you have a concept of honesty. You will automatically be attacked by your local ADL because they can sense the anti-Semitism just through your masculine virtues. So this is where does the Jew stand as far as this goes? This tells you who he is as a person. Can he transcend his Jewishness or is he always going to be a slave to his Jewishness? And, and this is just the reality of it. This is something that the Jew has to overcome. If not, well, look, hey, either your home's in Israel 
or you know whatever else, but it's not here. If we have this fascistic society, you have to be a part of it. This is how Italy did it too at first before the Hitler influence took over. The exact same kind of mentality. It's the exact same kind of mentality we have. No need to sugarcoat it. This is what it is. If, if you as an individual, as a Jewish individual who goes to a synagogue, supports these ideals, supports a country and respects a country with their traditions, their culture and their ideals and their religion, then more power to you. Welcome. But if you are hostile to this, the fuck do you expect? I mean, it is what it is. You've chosen your side. You know, so there, there's, and then someone had said um, in the comments, responded to you, um, I should have had it up, I forget, but he, he said, say something about how the elite Jews just used like the nine to five Jews to, um, uh, as cannon fodder. And that is another reality of it. I mean, why, when we speak about Jewish bank ownership and Jewish media ownership and, and Jews involved in politics and Jews that are very anti-white, why would any um, you know other Jew nine to five Jew be offended by that? That is reality. You should back us with that. We can, you know whites can talk shit about George Bush all day. We can talk shit about our bad white leaders all day long, right? So why don't you also join us with that and be able to attack and criticize the, the bad elements within your own group as well? So it comes back to the Jew as far as that goes. It, it always does. It's it's we're very accepting people if you respect. And respect our traditions and culture. If you show merit within yourself, if you can fit within our our virtue system, we're very fucking accepting people. Much to our own detriment at times. So it it falls on them to accept that. How will you know he's truly your your friend and he's truly a decent person? If you show him those videos and see his reaction to that, if you explain to them what fascism is and see his reaction to that, he will tell you himself. Because you know there used to be I made. The first video I ever got banned off YouTube off of was in 2006. And it was called Good Jews, Bad Jews, question mark. And the point I made in that video, and that account was Quest1234, my first fucking account. And, um, oh, the point of the video was, before you say a Jewish person is good or bad, it doesn't matter, it's irrelevant, because they're a Jew. Before they're good or bad, they're a Jew. And, and that's the differing aspect. And, and for example, like I've met a few Jews, like especially in jiu-jitsu, right? That were very fucking nice people, very helping people. Like there was a couple that go out of their way to work a move with me that, that were much more skilled and talented and knowledgeable than me that go out of their way to do this when they didn't need to, right? So you could see the goodness and the generosity of this person. But at the same time, they would be heavily um, anti-tradition, culture, uh, anti-American, anti-Americana, essentially, in their political and spiritual and social beliefs. So you would say, hey, this is a good person, good person. He's generous. He's, you know, helpful, uh, polite, et cetera, right? It's not, it may, might fuck you over if you do, do a deal with him. You never know because there, there was exactly an example of that, which was funny, I thought that someone couldn't outshine their Jewishness, but story for another time. Anyways, um, but, you know, it's it's beyond that. It's that, that essence, that Jewish essence that kind of conducts who they are. And, and we all have that essence. And, and, and it is, it is um, metaphysical, but it's also biological too. And, and so is, do they transcend that? Do, that is the question. That is the question I always look at. Do they transcend that? I don't give a fuck what someone's ethnicity, religion are. If they can transcend uh, these things we're speaking about, then that's fine with me. I, I, I don't care. So look at that. That, that, that. That's the main point. You'll know who he is by his reaction. And you'll know whether he's a worthwhile friend or not. And lastly... Um, next you should do a video on the Syrian civil war. I'd love to hear your take on it. Maybe on your CT Rants channel. So here we go on the CT Rants channel. And the Syrian war, I mean, I think we all agree on what it is. It's, they're trying to take out Assad. Assad won't play ball with a Zio Americanism. And, you know, there's been cases made that it's over pipelines. There's been cases made. Um, well, I think overall the pipelines kind of go into this is he won't play ball with Zio Americanism. He's he's in bed with Iran and Russia, and especially when it comes to pipelines. So this is no good thing. We got to get rid of Assad. So as I explained in the Baathist video that 
the the conflict with um, fanatical Islamists have been going on forever in Syria and forever, you know, throughout the Arab lands. So that's nothing new. What's new is, or what's semi new, because America's always been involved to one extent or another, but is is the overtly over, you know, dramatization and, and, and the pushing of the destroying of Assad through the international media, through American Zionist um, countries and, and, and media outlets and all this stuff. So they're trying to take down Assad because he doesn't play ball. They want to put a dictator in there that um, will play ball. And that's I think that's what it comes down to. So they've funded and trained these um, psychopaths, these, you know, people going around decapitating people and running their heads over with tanks and just all kind of sadistic shit, uh, just sick people. They're, you know, funding these people. They want to take down Assad so they can get someone in office that plays ball. They need it like they got it in Afghanistan. They need it like they got it in Iraq. And they want it like that in Syria. And so this is this is what they're doing. I, I think it's horrible. It's um, it's funny. Before I started this video, I was just talking to my wife. And she was like, Would, you know, so are you going to vote for Trump again? I was like, well, no, you know, he, the, the, the initial impact was what I was excited about and it happened. Now it's time to move on. Now I kind of hope a leftist wins because I think we kind of need that kick in the ass now too, to get this uh, reactionary right going. But, um, one of the few things I like, I, I naively thought he would come through on was the wall, which still might happen and not starting, not nation building. And especially in the middle East. And fucking A, if he didn't do that, if he didn't attack Assyria and, and if Tillerson ain't talking about taking out Assad. So, you know, unfortunately, that would, wasn't reality. You can say, oh, you're, how naive were you to believe? Like, I didn't believe a lot of this. I knew he couldn't get done. Even if he really wanted to, I knew he couldn't get much of the shit done. He wanted to say he did. But I thought those were two things I was hoping for, at least, that would, he would come through on. And it, it was very disheartening. Like, I remember I was sick for like two days. They're not physically sick, but uh, like... I don't know, I guess depressed for like two days after that, that missile strike on Syria because it's like, ah, God damn it, you know, that quick, <laughs> you're going to fucking quickly go back on that, that fucking quick. And it's in, in his book, The Art of the Deal, he, got, he speaks about a moment where he had much sympathy over television, uh, something he saw on television. And that's what I think what happened with this. He saw, you know, this bullshit propaganda of gas attack on, on civilians and kids and he fell for the okie doke on that and, and, and launched an attack. But, um, or, you know, he's just doing the neocons. They're talking, they're in his head telling him what to do. You know, who knows, who knows what the reasons were, but that was, that, that was disheartening. But, um, yeah, it, it's Assad needs to remain in power. If, if he needs, if he needs to leave, it needs to be done organically through the Syrian people with non-interventionism from especially America. I don't know. I'm not a Syrian living in Syria. You know, you got Syrian girl out there. She's a propagandist for uh, the Syrian state. Don't fall for any of that shit. But um, not not to say that good information and legit information isn't gotten through people like that. But you got to read between the lines. So I don't know if, you know, he's living up to um, the ideals of the Ba'athist party or if he's uh, truly beneficial to his country and people. Um I would I would think he would be more so than many other people in that country, but once again I'm not a Syrian living there right now. I couldn't give you a, a true opinion on that, and you'd probably get you know depending on what Syrian you talk to, different opinions on that. So, what I do know is if change needs to happen there, it needs to happen organically, and uh, it's not organically when we're funding and and supporting and, and have media propaganda against the state there. That's not organic at all. And that's the big problem. And that's what we've been doing over and over again. It's so fucking frustrating and we keep doing it. And, you know, whether we like to admit it or not, or, you know, we're all attached to it because we pay the taxes and we support the system and we go to work every day. So it's it just is the reality of the, uh, the situation. We support, uh, we're contributors to what our government has been doing overseas. And it's, it's an unfortunate reality. But so that's my thoughts on that. We, we need to get out of there. Um, ISIS and all this shit wouldn't even be around or as strong as they are if it wasn't for us being over there. So uh, we just seriously need to get out of there and focus on our own country and our own direction forward. Manifest American destiny is what we should be doing. And you're not doing that by because once again, even like even if it was empire, it's not even empire. 
Because even though we got bases all over the world, that doesn't benefit us as American citizens. We're not getting super cheap gas now, right? We're not, we don't have more territory to go move out to now, right? No, it benefits individual corporations. So, muh, capitalism. So, it's, um, it's not beneficial in any way, even if someone was an imperialist at heart. It doesn't benefit our nation at all. It doesn't. It benefits specific individual corporations at best. So it's, it's, I think it's a tragedy. I hate it. We make the same mistake over and over again. And, uh, you know, people argue about what bathrooms people should use instead of getting to, you know, the root of the problem with why do we keep going around being the world's police? And why don't we focus on, you know, ourselves and building ourselves up? Because we're, we're rotting from the inside, but we ignore that as, you know, we go all over the world, you know, bombing democracy into people and bombing liberalism in Hollywood into people. So it's, it's not good at all. That, that, that's my views on that. Uh, okay, I think I covered uh, every question. What are we at? 45 fucking minutes now. So uh, that's a long question and answer. So cheers. Salute to all the veterans out there, to all the warriors, to the people, despite whatever uh, the reason of the war was. Uh, they fought. And you have to respect that in itself, that they fought.